half the fun at Royal Ascot is spotting winners. But even if it's raining, the other half is spotting celebrities. Earl Dalkeith, for example, or Mrs. Gerald Lassells. And if you're allowed three halves, the other half is looking at the surprising things people wear. And if you're a woman, wishing you'd thought of it first. The Queen walking to the paddock with the Queen Mother is, of course, the centre of attention. You won't see Prince Philip because he's inspecting the tote from the inside. But you will see Sir Winston Churchill, who never misses Ascot if he can help it. And naturally, Norman Hartnell, who never misses Ascot, period. Rain or no rain, it's still one of the year's major fashion events. The moment the rain lets up, you fold your umbrella and spread your wings. Five minutes later, it'll be vice versa. This is a race meeting, remember? So let's go to the paddock and see the field for the gold bars. Here's Lord Sefton's Owen Gandawa. And Red Dragon, owned by the Princess Royal. And what's all this, a new Welsh challenge to the French and Irish? Well, we'll soon see, for they're coming up to the start. And they're off! There's no Queen's entry for the gold bars. The only royal horse is the Princess Royal's Red Dragon. Now, I can see Compromise doing well there, and Supreme Courage. Coming round the bend into the final straight, and it's the favourite Even Money leading with Owen Glendower second, and Compromise third. Even Money's running well, and it looks as though the only real fight's going to be for a place. He may be called Even Money, but if your two bob was on him, you've won at nine to four. One of the easiest Gold Vows winners ever, and yes, he's Irish. It's starting to rain in earnest as the field assembles for the Ascot Stakes, longest race of the day. There's Garibaldi, Iger, Beyond the Moss, Lucky White Heather, Fur Bonnet. And they're off, with two and a half miles ahead of them. Passing the stands for the first time, it's Niccolo, closely followed by Celestial Sucker and Fearless Cavalier. Into the final straight, and now it's Seleucus in the lead. But he's being strongly challenged by Garibaldi. But now San Diego's coming through. He's left Garibaldi behind, and he's passing Seleucus. Yes, it's San Diego, that northern six-year-old. Seleucus second. Garibaldi's challenges failed and he stuck at third as they passed the post. San Diego lay fifth until the last two furlongs, so that was no easy win. Just a remarkable effort by a real stayer. You got a hundred to seven for your money. Or did you? <laughs> <laughs>